Previously recorded. The sticky sticky. You know, then I know I got me enough. See it? See how sticky that it is? That's sticky. That's good, just like that. Now I know I got me a good gravy. The turkey wings out of the oven. Y'all see that gravy? Nice and they behind the camera, y'all. Nice and thin gravy. You don't want it too thick. That way, when it cool down, it it gonna be the the perfect consistency. But yes, y'all, this is the smother mm, turkey wings. Child, do y'all? Do y'all see this here? That's why I told you, don't worry about them being piled up on top of one another. It's all right. You're gonna be, you're gonna be able to dig them right out that pan, baby, just like you want them. And like I said, you want them to be fork tender. Shana, this was for you. So I hope your dad try it and it turned out good. When he do, let me know what y'all what you think about it. All right, y'all. Blessings. For the cornbread, you're going to need some cornbread of corn meal of your choice. I have some self rising buttermilk cornmeal. You're going to need some sugar, self rising flour, vegetable oil, and two eggs. It just depends on how much you make. You may need to double up the recipe. You're going to add two, two cups of cornmeal, half a cup of your self rising flour. The sugar is optional, but I like sugar in my bread, so I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar, one fourth cup, two eggs, then you're going to need water or milk. I'm going to add just maybe like a little teaspoon of salt, that's just the season of the meal. And I just like to add just a little pinch of pepper just because I don't know why I always add pepper to my cornbread. So we're just gonna add a little pepper like that. I just do. Then I'm gonna measure my water with this kind of measuring cup since a lot of people that use cups like this, which this is not the correct cup to use, but I'm gonna use it because a lot of people don't have regular measuring cups. To this, I'm gonna add one fourth cup of vegetable oil canola oil 
either one will work. All right, I'm going to try to measure the liquid for you. So, so far I have one cup, so I'm going to pour that one cup of water right in there. And we're going to mix. All right, so after adding the one cup of water, this is the consistency that I have, and it is too thick. So, now I have another half cup of water. I'm going to add that right on in there and mix. Now, this is the consistency I have. This is a perfect consistency for my cornbread. And if you're just going to make cornbread on its own and not dressing, this is the perfect mix for cornbread. Two cups of self rising cornmeal. Um, what was it? A qu quarter cup, I believe, of chai. Y'all go back and watch the chai. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even remember, but yeah, follow, follow the instructions and you won't go wrong. But that, that's the consistency. So now I'm going to take me some oil to grease my pan. Just add some oil to the pan, just like you're trying to butter a pan for cake or something like that. Just grease it all the way around. And I have me a half size aluminum pan. You just, you can find you like a, um, what is it? About a 9, 12 inch pan, something like that. I don't know the measurements, y'all. Let's get your pan, okay? Bake your bread. Listen, the long as the pan is just overly sized, where it's going to turn out thin as the bottom of the pan, okay? Just get, make you some bread. Get your pan, put that bread in that pan, throw it in a 375 degree oven on the middle rack, and let it bake. So now I have the bread in the pan. Shake it even. We're going to throw this on in the oven. 375 degrees my oven is preheated on and it's going to go on the middle rack like that and you're just going to bake it until the, br the bread is done you'll know the bread is done if you start seeing a crack on top a little bit or if you're not sure take your fork stick it down in it or a toothpick and that's how you bake some homemade cornbread it has now been 34 minutes and my cornbread is done but i'm just gonna turn it up on about 400 or something like that to just let it get some color on the top of it but this bread is done um the reason why it's ruffled up around the edge is because i didn't use a new pan this is an old pan that's ruffled up so it caused the edge to ruffle up but honey this gonna be ruffled up it ain't gonna it ain't gonna matter but yeah i'm just gonna turn this up just to let it get some color on top all right so this is the bread nice and golden brown i actually cooked it for another nine minutes on 400 degrees just to get it to this golden brown color now if you want to serve this bread just to have cornbread on the side add you some butter on top and boom you got some cornbread all right so now i have my chicken and my big pot so what I'm about to do is, before I actually season my chicken and all that stuff like that, I like to pre-boil my chicken that is already cleaned up. I did, I got all the nasty inside of the cut, the, you know, the nasty fat and all that stuff off of it, most of it. And then, now I'm about to take my chicken, put it in my pot, and I'm going to pre-boil it for like 10 minutes. And, and then, without any seasoning, then dump that water off. And then, after I do that. I'll come back and show you what I do next. But I have four chicken thighs and four chicken legs. Skin, leave the skin on. I always leave the skin on my chicken when I make chicken dressing. And please don't use no chicken breasts. I don't like chicken breasts. I like to use dark meat. Okay? Especially when doing chicken dressing. So, got four chicken thighs, four chicken legs. And uh, that's two, two uh, let me see. That'll make it four leg quarters if you want to break it down. Four leg quarters, I just cut them in half. So four chicken thighs, four chicken legs. So you could just use all chicken thighs, eight chicken thighs, and just call it a day. But this is what I got. So I'm about to put some water in this pot, let it boil for 10 minutes, then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. All right, so as you can see, I got enough water in my pot to boil the chicken. So now I'm just going to crack my lid on it so that when it start foaming up, it don't boil over. And I'm just gonna let this boil for about 10 minutes, just long enough to pre-clean it. That's what I'm doing is pre-cleaning my chicken, you know, like of all the impurities and stuff like that. You'll see what I'm talking about as it start boiling all the white stuff, and sometimes it'll give off like a little brownish-looking color from the blood and stuff like that. So that's what I boil off. 
first before I season my chicken. As you can see, this chicken is boiling and you see the nastiness that's coming up off of it. That's why I don't season it first because I get the majority of all that off of the chicken first. So I'm going to let this boil for a few more minutes and we're going to dump this off in the sink, rinse it off, clean the pot out and start all over again with a fresh pot of water with our chicken in it. The seasonings that you're going to need is some poultry seasoning. You're going to need an onion, bell pepper, and celery is optional. I'm not using that today because I don't have any of it, but it don't make a difference whether I use it or not. Um, I'm going to use some sage. And then this is optional as well, but I like to add the um, cream of chicken for the creaminess. And also you're going to need you two eggs for the size pan of dressing that I'm going to make. So two eggs. And um, what you're going to do with the onions, the bell pepper, and the celery is you're going to dice it up, get, get, you, get you a little oil in the pan, and you're going to saute it until it's nice and tender. The bell pepper, the onion, and the celery together, nice and tender. That way, when it's time to combine everything together, you can add your bell pepper, onion, and celery together in the pan with the dressing and mix it all in. But don't put it in a raw because it's going to be crunchy. You don't want it to be crunchy. You want it to be nice and soft and tender. You just want that flavor in there. Now, if you're anything like me, I'd rather use celery salt in mine just for the flavor. You know, I don't care for the celery. But if I have it, I will use it and I will do exactly what I told y'all to do. But since I don't have it, then I will use um, some celery salt. And also you're gonna need seasonings of your choice, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, seasoning salt, whatever kind of seasonings that you wanna use, just mix it on in there. But make sure that you have your poultry seasoning and your sage because this is what makes the dressing. And we're gonna need one more thing. The one thing that I like to mix in my dressing is um, stuffing mix. If you have some stuffing mix, then mix the stuff in and mix in with it. That's just going to add another layer of flavor. It's going to make it so much more better. But if you use the stuff and mix, do not use the celery salt because it might make it a little bit too salty. So I don't have the stuff and mix. So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way and make my dressing the old fashioned way without the stuff and mix. It's even good just like this. Before I started using the stuff and mix, this is the way that I, was, I used to make my dressing. So now I'm going to take my chicken and all the nasty and I'm just dumping it all in the sink. Chicken and all. And I'm going to wash that off, wash my pot out, get it back in the sink with a fresh pot of water to finish cooking the chicken. Alright, so I have my chicken back on the stove. No seasoning yet. We're about to get ready to season it. But as you can see, I have a lot of liquid in my pot. When you're making chicken dressing, make sure that you make more liquid than you need because you have to use that liquid from this chicken to make your dressing. So I have, I know it's going to be more liquid than I'm going to need to make my dressing. The water is well over the chicken. But this is, this is going to be the chicken for the dressing and the stock that I'm going to be using for the dressing. So let's let me show you how I'm gonna season it up. All right, y'all. So I got my chicken here back on the stove boiling, and you see it's gonna create a little bit more froth. So what I'm just doing is skimming off what it's creating. You're not gonna get all of it, but at least you get most of it off. That'll be good. Okay, that's good. It's not as thick. See, it was a lot, but once you skim it off, you're going to realize it ain't as much as it was when you skim it. Now, the little bit that's left, that'll be fine. Now, we got our chicken clean. Alright, so first thing first, what I'm about to do is I'm about to go in with my onion because I don't have no celery, no bell pepper, and all that. And it, you don't have to saute it neither. You can just add it right on in here if you want to. That's what I like to do. But I do it both ways. There's no right, no wrong way to do it, y'all. In the end of it, as long as it tastes good, that's really all that matters. So I'm just cutting this onion up in here. And I'm letting this here cook right along with my chicken. And you can use a whole onion. 
medium, small, however much onion that you like is up to you. You can cut your bell pepper in here. Get you maybe like three sauces. Uh, I mean, one bell pepper, two. Just depends on how much you're making. Three sauces of celery is good. Let me get another half of onion. That was just only a half of onion. I'm going to get another half. That'll be a whole onion. So I'm going to cut this other half up in here. Now, what will be good to your seasonings is add you a chicken, add you some a chicken, like two chicken bun, bouillon cubes to this to intensify the flavor of that chicken broth. Okay, then um, or chicken bouillon seasoning higher. So now I'm going to take my poultry seasoning, get that off up in there, get you a good amount, and make sure that you taste the broth. Taste the broth. That way you make sure that it is going to be just right for your dressing, okay? You want that, that broth to be nice and flavorful. Then you add you some sage, maybe like two to three tablespoons of sage. It's up to you. I like mine to have this nice sage flavor. So two to tablespoon, three tablespoons is good. I like, even though I add some into my dressing, when I go to mixing, I also like to add it in my chicken when I'm boiling it. All right, so then... You want to go in with your seasonings, whatever seasonings that you choose, your onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, seasoning salt, you know, I'm using my all-purpose seasoning, and that's it. So now you're just going to let this boil until the chicken is tender and falling off the bone. Make sure you taste your broth. After maybe like five minutes, once the seasonings come together, so you can see if it's seasoned enough for you. This is the chicken bouillon seasoning that I use, but like I said, you can use the cubes. Alrighty, y'all. Y'all see that nice, pretty liquor? Got a lot of flavor and flavorful. The chicken is done and it's ready to be picked off the bone. As you can see, it's just coming right off. So we just about to take this out. Put it in a bowl and let it cool so we can pick all the meat off the bones. Be, scurt, be sure when you scoop the chicken out that you scoop your onions and your celery out as well if you put them in there. Scoop you out as many as you can get out of there. Because all that's going to go in your dressing. And do not get rid of the stock because remember I said that's going to be used for the broth when we get ready to need, mix the dressing together. All right, y'all, so now <clears throat> I have picked my chicken off the bones. We got it right here, and all the bones got picked out of it. It's okay if you leave a little, few little bristles or something like that, honey. It's going to be all right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the cornbread, and we're going to break it up. <clears throat> we're going to break the cornbread up. You ain't got to try to break it all down fine and all that. Just break it up in your pan, just like so. And if you have cooked your cornbread a day or two before, that will be even better because your cornbread wouldn't be so soft, you know. So it would be better if you make it before, which I made my cornbread this morning, but it's still fresh. Okay. So now we got that. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to take all of your chicken and you're going to add it right in with the cornbread. <clears throat> and the eggs that I have, they is medium eggs. Medium sized eggs. So now you're just going to take this here and you're just going to mix your chicken with your bread. Then I'm going to add my cream of chicken. You can use cream of celery, cream of mushroom, either one of them that you want to use is up to you. But I have a 10.5 ounce can of cream of chicken and I'm only using that size because I have a small pan. If I was doing a big pan, I'd get a big can. 
And I like to use the cream of chicken for the creaminess that it adds. Sometimes people use too much cream of chicken. It don't take that much cream of chicken to make no dressing. You just want it for the, the nice creaminess that it's going to give it. So you're going to mix that in. Then, now you're going to go in with <clears throat> your broth. So I'm going to try to measure the broth for y'all, even though your chicken might be bigger than mine. You might need a little bit more broth, but this is a one cup measuring cup. So I'm going to add one cup to start out with. And I like to mix my dressing with my hand because I can feel it to see if I need any more liquid and stuff like that. But if I need to, I am going to go in and use my hand. So now we're going to add another cup. And I'm using this cup only because some people don't have the other measuring cup, the one you use to measure liquid. So that's why I'm using this measuring cup. So that's two cups. Make sure you add all your bell pepper, your celery, and your onion. If you have sauteed it on the side, go ahead on and add it in at this point as well. So it can begin all mixed in together. I'm going to be adding another cup. So now that is three cups of liquid. You don't want it too wet, but you definitely don't want this too dry neither because you want to make sure that you soak up all that cornbread with your liquid. Don't try to break your chicken down too fine neither because you you don't want no fine chicken in your chicken dressing. Just pick the chicken off the bone. If the chunks is too big, then break them apart. Okay, so it almost look like I'm going to need about a half cup more of liquid. Zoom your eye in a little bit more so you can see the consistency. Okay, so I'm going to add about a half cup more. That's why I tell you, make enough liquid, especially if you're making a big pan, make sure you have enough liquid. So that's three and a half cups of liquid so far. Oh yeah, I think this is going to be enough right here. Yep, that's going to be enough. Mm hmm Now the purpose of the eggs is because they are binder. That's the reason why we add eggs to this. So you use the eggs just for a binder. You don't have to put the eggs in it, it's optional. Some people like to boil the eggs and put it in here, but you don't have to put the eggs. Oh yeah, that is perfect. So now we're going to go in and taste it, see if we need any more of our seasonings that we added to the chicken before, before we add eggs. Mm. I can't complain. I don't think it needs nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. So now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to crack my two eggs. Uh -huh. 
things come up. Add it in. And now you're going to mix your eggs in there. Make sure you get it all the way, all fully incorporated. So now I'm going to cover this for the first portion of the cooking process. I don't know how long I'm going to bake this, but I'm just going to bake this to start cooking the egg in this internally. Then maybe like for 30 minutes, I'm going to bake this to start getting it to hold together, cover. Then I'm going to take the foil off and finish baking it all the way through on top. So, I'm going to let this cook for like 30 minutes. I'm going to say I never had the time of chicken dressing, but I'm going to let this cook for like 30 minutes just to get the internal temperature cooked and let the egg start binding the dressing together and all that stuff like that. I'm going to put some foil on this. And my oven is on. I'm going to check. I'm going to put it on 375 degrees. Put that in the oven and let it bake on 375 for 30 minutes for the first half. I'm going to do 30 minutes and I'm going to come back and let y'all know what I think. All right, family. It has been 30 minutes and this is what my dressing is looking like. It is heated all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up in here and agitate it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Stir it all up and all that good stuff. You know, just like that. Somebody probably saying no to you but yes, baby. Yes. Do it like this right here. Agitate it. Spread it back out. Like that right there. Because that blend in the little wetness that was just sitting on the top. After taking that foil off. So now, throw it in the oven and let it dry out even more for another. We're going to go for another 30 minutes on 375 degrees uncovered. All right, y'all. This is the chicken dressing. I done took it out of the oven after another 30 minutes. So that makes an hour cook time 30 minutes uncovered. Oh, yeah. It's done. It is done. It's all together. So, yeah. Push that back nice and moist. And that is the chicken dressing, y'all. I've got like a little crust on top. But you know it's done when it's nice and thick. That's what you want to get kind of like thickened up a little bit. But it's not going to be dry because we put that chicken dressing, cream of chicken in there. So, until next time, this your girl, Tia and I going to be me. Thank y'all for coming and watching this video. And I hope y'all enjoy my recipes. Happy holidays to all of you guys. And Shayna, this was for you. So, I hope your dad try it and it turned out good. When he do, let me know what y'all what you think about it all right y'all blessings